tall black jerseys? Toilet paper? Whoa! From the drip game to some really weird outfits, I bet you didn't know. There are some things simply not allowed in the game. So I decided to make a list of the 10 banned accessories in football. And first up, FIFA said no to the ice game. Think about it. Some of the best ballers back in the day used to put on the ice and drip to games. I mean, check out my boy Ronaldinho and even Ronaldo. Whew, I bet both their earrings cost a fortune. But unfortunately, the only place they'd be able to wear it in a football game is the locker room and not the pitch. The reason for that is because the rule guys decided that wearing jewelry in the field during games can cause serious problems to players. I mean, imagine getting a diamond wedged in your throat after a collision. Basically, this one was ruled out for safety concerns. But when they banned this next one, it almost started a fashion war. Snoods! Back in the early 2010s, they were even cooler than sneakers. Soon as it got released, the Nike snoods became so popular that even pro ballers started turning up with them to training sessions. And some even took it from just training sessions to actual matches. They quickly became a trending thing, and now everyone wanted a piece. But pretty soon, the guys at FIFA acted as killjoys and decided to ban it. According to them, they said wearing snoods could confuse a player's identity in a match, and it could pose harm to a player's life if he got caught up with it in a game. I don't know, this just sounds like they wanted to make up some fancy excuse for taking this one down, and I'm not buying it. Just like I won't be buying Sony headphones anytime soon, after they almost tried to ruin the World Cup. Get this, the FIFA World Cup Finals of 2014, and Brazil was the host nation. Now, because of how big the competition is, Brazil and FIFA had several brands all lining up to market their products on football's biggest stage. But one brand decided to cheat their way through and struck a deal with FIFA to almost ruin the competition. See, Sony didn't just introduce their new headphones to the game. They were forcing everyone to wear them. As a result, a lot of players kicked out. But no one could really do anything because FIFA was behind it. Until one dude decided he wasn't going to take this one easy. My boy Neymar. And so in his next game at the showpiece event, he showed up and made a statement. He ditched the whack headphones. After him, other ballers started copying the trend. And just like that, Sony was out of the game. Serves them right for trying to buy their way to the competition. Over the years, the World Cup has seen a lot of crazy band stuff, but I don't think anyone is as weird as True Socks. Yup, you heard me right, FIFA legit banned socks from the game, and that sucks. At the 2018 World Cup, a couple of English players like Raheem Sterling and Deli Ali decided to ditch the traditional short socks for some cooler True Socks. But FIFA said no. Still, they wore it, and pretty soon, the English FA backed a fine of over 70k because of that. I'm just saying, if I was in the accounting department for the English national team at the World Cup, there's no way I'm paying a 70k fine for socks. I mean, I'd rather pay that to get the one-of-one -one dragon jersey FIFA banned months later. In 2018, Nike and China were all set to take the football world by storm. Now, I'd been hearing rumors of this one for weeks, but when I finally saw it, I couldn't believe it. The Nike official jersey for the Chinese football team was released, and it looked amazing. The dragon print on the jersey made it a must-have. At least that's what I thought, and even FIFA was cool with the kit. But the problem with this one was from the Chinese FA themselves. Yep, they banned it. According to them, the color black means bad luck in China. Plus, they take the dragon symbol seriously and didn't want it on the jersey. Such a shame, man, because this one could have been an all-time classic, just like the Cameroon sleeveless kits of the early 2000s. Back then, Cameroon were the bad guys in the game. They legit dared authority. See, FIFA had a long-standing rule about kits back then that usually made almost every national team jersey plain old and boring. So coming into the 2002 African Cup of Nations, the Cameroonian FA partnered with Puma and decided to spice it up a bit. Crazy stuff! But this only went on to anger almost everyone at FIFA HQ, because according to the FIFA spokesperson at the time, 
They're vests, not shirts. Um, yeah, I know that, but it doesn't mean they're not cool. Anyway, this one was far from over, because Cameroon had another trick up their sleeves. Sorry, Vest. And in the 2004 African Cup of Nations, produced a plot twist that made FIFA lose it. Can't even lie, I laughed hard when I saw this one. In the end, FIFA stood their ground, and Cameroon started wearing actual jerseys in major competitions after this. Looking back at all this, I guess it's safe to say FIFA is so concerned about the game that they absolutely hate it when people try to breach the rules. Guess that's also why they banned this one from the game. Personalized messages or logos aren't allowed, and there's a reason for that. See, football's the beautiful game, and it's gotta stay that way, which is why any form of political ads or campaigns aren't allowed in the sport because it can influence supporters' decisions and ruin the game. Combine this with the fact that almost everyone working in FIFA HQ right now is a killjoy, so yeah, they simply aren't allowed and could get you sent off if you tried or wore it. But sometimes, it isn't just FIFA clamping down on the laws. Government officials get involved too, like the dudes in Qatar. The 2022 World Cup had a lot going on backstage, controversies all round. Weeks before, just when it looked like it couldn't get any worse, it actually did. See, the Qatar government is really strict about their rules for tourists and foreigners, and despite the fact that they were hosting the World Cup, they weren't willing to change that, and that also included the love armband Captain's armband. For UEFA, they didn't have an issue with this. They'd even allowed countries like Germany and the Netherlands to wear it in games, but Qatar said no. Now, this one had nothing to do with the players, it was simply a culture shock they didn't agree with. Luckily for football, all countries involved moved on and didn't allow it to roll over. And speaking of rollover, I bet you didn't know tissue paper has been banned from football. Now, this has a funny backstory to it. Now, throwing tissue paper in football stadiums was a weird incident that was strangely common back in the day, until 1990, after Gary Lineker got it banned. See, in England's match against Ireland at the World Cup, Lineker released a number two on the field. According to Lineker, he didn't want to let his team down, but as a result, he let one down on himself. Once rival fans realized what Lineker had done, well, it went out of control. There was tissue paper everywhere. As a result, the English FA had to get involved, and they banned toilet paper from White Hart Lane. To be fair, the sight of toilet rolls dropping down like that did kind of give White Hart Lane a cool backdrop. Unfortunately, that stuff's banned now, just like pitch designs were in 2018. Now, before the 2017-18 season, clubs were allowed to have specific designs relating to their stadiums, and I don't think I've seen as incredible as the pitch design at Leicester City's King Power Stadium. Breathtaking stuff! Too bad we won't be seeing anything like it again, because it's been banned. The Premier League issued a ban on elaborate pitch designs at the start of the 2017-18 season and stated that all teams now had to stick to the traditional horizontal lines for pitch designs, meaning anything else was going to get banned. Hey FIFA, if you're watching this, here's one thing you can't get banned. The subscribe button to our channel. It's immortal.